gosh, I tend to prioritize something that will be gentle on my sensitive skin. That obviously will clean it, but also keep it soft and hydrated. And that is what I feel native body washes have been for me. They are sulfate-free, phthalate-free, dye-free, and also vegan and cruelty-free. They come in a amazing, honestly, variety of scents that can even please somebody with a really picky nose like me. And recently, they've launched their Fall Escape collection of scents, which I actually really, really like. They're not the usual fall, like apple, cinnamon-y, whatever kind of scents. These are a bit different. They're a little fresher. I have vanilla and cactus flower, which is like a sweet and softly floral scent. I think this one's my favorite just because it's more interesting on my nose. I don't know why, but I keep wanting to like smell it. Desert grass and sandalwood, which is kind of a soft sweetly herbal. It's got some pear in it as well. And sage and sweet citrus, which is like a freshly peeled mandarin with a little hint of ginger and then just herbaceous and a little sweet. It's really nice. With some simple and effective ingredients, they make a luxurious leather that gives your skin smooth and smelling amazing. I also am always using their plastic-free deodorant. It's how I was introduced to Native originally. I think they recently launched a less plastic body wash. So three 18 fluid ounce body washes like these would usually go for about $27. But with my code JOSIEB4, you can get them for $18 which I think is a little over 33% off, so <laughs> feel free to use that. It'll be linked in the description box as well and pinned in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching and for supporting, and I'm sending you all the love, all the love of the love. I hope you enjoyed tonight's video.
doesn't it? some tea, a little nudge to maybe 
spicy, sweet, and chewy, very chewy, and I love a good chewy texture. Yeah, it definitely takes all the attention <laughs> to eating the candy because it's you're like you don't want it to get stuck in your teeth, so you're like focusing on
is enough. Your best is enough. You are not lazy. You are not lazy. You deserve a break. no such thing. No, no such thing as perfect. It does not. 
Okay. 
is uh, some form of a face treatment. <laughs> I think it was a moisturizer with retinol or something in it. Like I said, no idea. I just saw it and it looked cute.
feel like that has been helpful to me. So I'm passing it along. I never got to put this on you. And
It's like a little ghosty or a little pink human thing and it's on facing its phone, looking at its phone and says, sorry, I can't hang out tonight. I got like 10 things going on. I'm so busy. And the next scene is it lying with a pillow behind its back and a list of 10 things. One, rest. Two, daydream. Three, look at clouds. Four, breathe. Five, digest. Six, chill. Seven, relax. Eight, process life. Thank you. 
on the camera. 
camera, oh my gosh. <laughs> How did he turn on the flash? I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> and now I have the little, the little light things in my eye. Your creative process does not have to look like having anything figured out. I feel like all the time I want to look like I have things figured out, but baby, baby I don't. I don't have a thing figured out. Not a thing. <laughs> I feel like most days I literally am winging it. And I have so much, so much to be proud of and to feel like I've been able to build a sense of safety for myself and still it all sometimes just feels like too much, like out of my control, like like I don't know at all what I'm doing and that it's a miracle I got here. Your creative process gets to be pleasurable, playful, and nourishing. Your creative process gets to be as crucial as other forms of daily self and collective care. Your creative process does not have to result in something massive to be celebrated. Your creative process does not have to result in something massive to be medicine. In the words of Audre Lorde, Poetry is not a luxury, it is a vital necessity of our existence. It forms the quality of the light within which we predicate our hopes and dreams towards survival and change. First made into language, then into idea, then into more tangible action. Poetry is the way we help give name to the nameless so it can be thought. The farthest horizons of our hopes fears are cobbled by our poems, carved from the rock experiences of our daily lives.
the mom says, but also, you know, you just, if you look at the world, what you see is things appearing and disappearing, and humans are part of the whole of that. And humans appear and they disappear off the face of the earth. That just happens. You know, our egos personalize it, and we consider ourselves special cases, but we're really not, you know? We're where we are, are a part of the whole, and everything in the whole transforms all the time. It changes form, transfigures, and they're embracing now and tearing up. And the son says, you're a special case, and they laugh. That's because I'm your mama. No, no, I know this transfigure. I know, I know, I know, but come on. There's no way to stop the heartbreak. How do you? What do you do about that? And she says, you cry. And then he cries, and she says, you cry. And I thought that was so beautiful. So sad. So sad, so sad. Soon, okay.